Hey there, so today I want to talk about piecewise functions. These can be a little intimidating when you first see them, uh, so I wanted to show you that it's really not that terrible, and it's, it's kind of a, a cool idea. So I want you to imagine that you have two separate graphs of two different functions. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, is there a way I could combine these to create another function, a totally new function? And if I could, what would the equation of that function be? Well, hopefully you noticed that this fails the vertical line test, and so it can't even be the graph of a function, which means that we wouldn't be able to come up with this equation without any sort of ambiguity. Okay, so maybe this isn't the graph of a function, but perhaps we could take pieces of it that actually form a function. Here's what I mean by take pieces of it. Let's take the piece of y equals x squared, but only when x is less than zero. So I'm going to erase all of the stuff where x is actually bigger than 0. You probably notice that this still is not a function, so that's a bummer. But maybe if we take a piece of the y equals x graph as well, maybe let's take the piece of y equals x where x is only bigger than 0. So I'll erase the less than 0 portion. Now this looks like a function, doesn't it? It passes the vertical line test. That's awesome. Now we need to know what is its equation. But before we do that, I want to point out that me choosing x less than 0 and x bigger than or equal to 0 was totally arbitrary. I could have picked x less than 1, and then I would have erased everything except for the portion where x was less than 1. So this x less than 0, x greater than or equal to 0, those were my choices. We'll see a new example on the next slide where we have different numbers. So now let's figure out how to write the equation for this function. So piecewise functions will start off looking like this. Big curly bracket there. And now we need to describe what happens for each piece that we have chosen. So here's how you do it. You write the function. So the function was x squared. And when do we want this function? Only when x is less than 0. So it looks just like this. Now I bet you can figure out what the second piece is. It's the function y equals x, but only when x is bigger than or equal to 0. And again, these are called piecewise functions. The reason they're called piecewise is because you're taking pieces of separate individual functions to create a new one. Okay, let's try a more complicated example now. As you can see, this is a piecewise function. It also has three separate pieces. You can see that it is the function 3 when x is less than negative 2, and then there are two other pieces as well. Let's go slowly through this and figure out how to graph it. Just go one piece at a time. Let's look at the first piece, and let's determine that restriction x less than negative 2. That's the portion of the x-axis to the left side of negative 2. Now we need to graph that function 3. That's just y equals 3, which is a horizontal line, up at 3. But we only want it when x is less than negative 2, so we're only going to draw it to the left of negative 2, and furthermore, it's going to be an open circle right above negative 2, because x is not actually less than or equal to negative 2, it's only less than negative 2. Once we've done that piece, let's move on to the next one. We're looking at y equals negative 2x minus 4, which is a line with slope negative 2 and a y-intercept of negative 4. If you graph this out, it's going to look like this. But it's only for when x is between negative 2 and, x is and 0. So you start off at negative 2, and you go to the right until you hit 0, and that's when you stop. That's only the piece that we're looking at. And furthermore, because of the less than or equal to, you know, negative 2 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 0, we're going to put closed circles at the endpoints. Now that that section's finished, let's move on to the next one, the next piece. It's the graph of x squared, but only when x is bigger than 0. So x bigger than 0 is to the right side of 0, and furthermore, it's going to be an open circle at 0. Now we just need to graph x squared, but only in the right-hand portion. That's what it looks like. 
Now, as you're going through these, you need to ask yourself, is this a function? What we drew here, is this the graph of a function? And if you took a vertical line and you moved it all over the place, it would only ever hit one time on the graph, which means that, yes, it is a function. And you need to also ask yourself if you correctly put the open and closed circles. So the open and closed circles will be indicated by whether or not it's x less than some number or x less than or equal to a number. So there you go. There you have it. Those are piecewise functions.